So the story is the Paschal mystery lived out in our lives. For he has died, he is risen, and he will come again in almost everything. There's something about death and something about Easter and something about the promise in all that we face. The Paschal mystery comes to life in our stories and it's why those of you who are still tasting the taste of grief must be reassured that those you've lost and love will never die. There's something of the death and resurrection in everything we do. So look at your shoes, look at them. God in the ordinary, too right. Now sometimes tragedy focuses us and we move into the present moment. In Scotland, 
many years ago. A very sick man walked into a primary school and killed a lot of children, the village of Dunblane. And at that time I was working in a primary school. I noticed that every day the parents picked up their children in the same way. Will you get a move on? Come here. No, leave him. You're dragging your coat in the puddle. Will you get a move on? No, leave that football. Will you get... Come on, we've got to pick Jenny up from big school and then we've got to get to your dad's. Now, will you get a move on? But on this day, people had heard the news and as they gathered in the school to pick up their children, something quite extraordinary happened. I was watching this and had no idea that following that terrifying news which people had heard all day, those same parents gathered at a school and did this. Leave your coat, just come here a minute, come here. Big weathered hands clasping small heads and parents saying to their children, something happened today that scared me. You do know, don't you, that I love you. And what happened to you on September the 11th? It was three o'clock in the afternoon in England, and I remember I couldn't relate at all at all to those terrifying images. It seemed like a movie, that somehow it would be all right soon. I couldn't relate to the statistics at all, but what brought me crashing into the present moment was a simple story. What do you do if you know that your time is limited and you've got one phone call? Tell the kids, I love them. Because in the end, love is all you've got. And we reverence the here and now. This last story is inspired by Thomas Groom. I used to be a teacher of young people and this girl walked into my classroom in 1986. She was tall, Beautiful, intelligent, and very, very angry. As she wandered into my classroom that day, I don't know when it happened, but we began a fight that lasted a year. She ruined the atmosphere in every lesson, and when we gathered to consider taking them on a retreat, this girl came too, and we began what we called the Ministry of the Corridor Patrol. It's 11 o'clock at night. Will you stay in your own rooms? and you two get back to your own room now and I want the light off in two minutes. Two hours later. Look, I'm beginning to get very tired now. Will you stay in your own rooms and I want this light off. Four o'clock in the morning. Everyone's asleep but for this young woman, Katie. We couldn't find her. I was terrified. We began a search. And then I found her sitting on a dry stone wall, smoking a cigarette. I sit next to her and I say, Katie, for two hours, why don't you and I pretend we like each other? No one need ever know. Do you know what happened? She told me why she hated her stepdad, why she hated her mother, why she hated her brothers, why she hated the school, why she hated the Catholic Church, and most of all, why she hated me. And I don't know when it happened. I don't know when it happened. All I know is that 10 years later, I'm sitting in a cathedral in a city called Nottingham, and she taps me on the shoulder. And for the first time in my life, I said to somebody in church, Katie, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> And she said to me, she began this long story about how she'd fallen in love and how she wanted to change her job and how she couldn't wait to meet and marry. And the story went on and on and on and there was life in her eyes. She was a different woman. And as we were walking out of the church, she said to me, hey, I come here because of you. I said, Katie, I come here because of you.